Hi, hope your day is going pretty well. If you want some self-love and self-care, go and check our previous video of self-care if you haven't checked it yet. We will be uploading the science videos on Tuesdays and the self-care videos on Saturdays. Plan that in and let us directly jump to our today's topic. Okay, so today we will start by one of the quite common groups of liquid dosage forms, that is solutions. We came across solutions and knew how they are basically formed and what happen in the molecular level, taking one case scenario in the dissolution video. I will put the link to that video in the description box for you. So if we wanted to define solutions as dosage forms, we would say they are clear homogeneous dosage forms composed of one or more active pharmaceutical ingredients dissolved in a suitable solvent or solvents. We refer to the solvent system as the vehicle here, and that system can be aqueous or non aqueous. By dissolving the API and the various excipients in the chosen solvent, one phase system would be created. We wouldn't have any apparent solids even on the standing for a long time, and all things would really be in the solution state. The liquid we have would be quite clear, and if filtered, nothing would be retained in the filtration medium. What is the classification of pharmaceutical solutions? Well, we can say that we have aqueous ones and non-aqueous ones depending on the solvent system used. Yet another classification to which we can relate when speaking in an original pharmaceutics language is the one based on the route of administration. And according to that, we have four categories. One are the oral solutions, and these are the ones we take through our mouth targeting the oral cavity itself, the throat, or we just want the solution to pass them and get into our general circulation via the GIT. Examples include syrups, alexis, spirits, linktuses, mouthwashes, gargles, and others. Two are the solutions administered via the parental route with all its subcategories. To get some refreshing, you can refer to our dosage form design video and I will put the link to that video in the description box for you. The third group of solutions includes those applied on body surfaces like liniments and lotions. And finally, we have the solutions instilled into body cavities Dishes, enemas and drops are examples of such solutions. But what are the possible advantages that solutions can offer? Well, you can pause this video here, mention some, and then catch up from here again. Okay, one of the pros of solutions, as we saw, they can be designed for various routes of administration which makes them suitable to target different body areas, conditions and diseases, and also give wider options to select from for better probiotic efficacy, patient compliance, and other reasons. Oral drug delivery is the most encountered one. As we stated in a previous video, and oral solutions resemble quite convenient and easy way to take medicines, especially for children and elderly that might face difficulties when having solid dosage foams like tablets or capsules. Another advantage is that from the same medicine bottle, you can take one, three, five, seven, ten milliliters, or whatever number is prescribed for you which means that dose flexibility is feasible with pharmaceutical solutions. For the next one, I guess you should have mentioned it yourself, as we said earlier that drugs must dissolve before being absorbed, 
which is the case for solutions, and hence solutions provide faster absorption of drugs when compared to other dosage forms that pass through different stages before presenting the drug in the solution state. An additional plus to solutions comes from the nature. Being homogeneous, solutions facilitate the administration of uniform doses, which is not the case with liquid dosage foams, with other liquid dosage foams like suspensions and emulsions. On the other hand, solutions are bulky and not handy to take a walk around with. Their bulkness adds on the expenses of their transportation from an economic viewpoint. And for consumers, it's kind of troublesome. And yes, we said solutions enable flexible dosing, yet they require accuracy and technicality to be present while measuring the dose. Another thing worth mentioning is that masking unpleasant tastes of some components might be challenging with solutions as the ingredients are fully solubilized and thus having the maximum exposure to taste buds. Why? Because of the size surface area relationship. And also an inherent disadvantage of solutions, especially the aqueous ones, is their instability and microbial growth potential. Other instability forms might be physical, resulting as precipitation, or chemical, stemming from a reaction and may end up producing a gas. For some of the reasons just mentioned, special transferring and storage conditions might be required for solutions. I do believe that other pros and cons can be added to the list and we will be very happy to see you commenting with them. I will leave you doing that and next time we will know how solutions are prepared and what exhibients are added to solution formulations and we will touch the QC tests required for the finished products. Here is a quick recap of what has been said. You can take a screenshot and look at it later. And as always, stay fabulous wherever you are.